guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts my contemporary thon vlog, so stay tuned. So it is like 9.45 in the morning on Tuesday, September 18th, and I did actually start my contemporary thon yesterday, but I didn't get to vlog anything because when I was planning on vlogging, Riley came over and she wanted somebody to hang out with her and she was going to watch this movie and she was afraid she was going to fall asleep in and that was during the time that I would have been filming and all this stuff so I ended up putting off my filming but I continued to read and I figured I would just vlog this morning. So let me tell you how my reading went yesterday. So I started out with Whatever Happened to Janie by Carolyn B. Cooney. This was my five star prediction read and as I guessed it was five stars. I loved it. This is the second book in the Janie Johnson series. In the first book Janie discovers that she's not really Janie. She's actually Jenny Spring and she was kidnapped when she was three years old and the person that kidnapped her brought her to her parents and she was raised by her kidnappers parents and they thought they were raising their granddaughter it was crazy and what's even crazier is this is all based on a true story if you don't want any spoilers you should mute it for a second but at the end of the first book Janie informs her parents of well what happened and that there's this other family and she's seen this other family and she knows she's part of that family because she's the only one in her family with this wild crazy red hair and this other family that she has seen they all have this wild crazy red hair and she knows that she's this little girl on the milk carton and in the beginning of this book she is having to move from the family that she's spent her whole life with essentially the parents that she knows and loves and grew up with she's having to leave them and move two states away to live with her real parents and she's got three brothers and a sister and she goes from being an only child in a well-to-do family to one of five children in a very crowded very noisy house where everybody is sharing the same bathroom and they get like three minutes of hot water in the shower and she mm, she doesn't really adjust very well to it and it's just so much for her and I love this book I cannot wait to read the next one it's so good I think the next one's called the voice on the radio so yes I gave this five stars and I completed one challenge already Woo also when I went to the gym and when I was driving around I was listening to the audiobook of You by Carolyn Kepnes. I decided to go with an audiobook of this because I know it's told in like, you did this, I did this kind of thing. And I felt like listening to the audiobook of this would be great because it would be like this person is actually talking directly to you. And I thought that would make it a little creepier. And I got to page 85 of this. This is a interesting book it's uh i don't know it's kind of a little bit creepy but i'm going back and forth on oh this guy's just you know really good at research and then there's moments that i'm like okay this guy is super creepy stalker guy also the girl that he's like essentially stalking he makes her seem like she's this brilliant well-rounded woman and she is just I don't know she, she sounds like the typical shallow college party girl and I don't know and this is for my read a dark contemporary though I guess it also works for my read a contemporary in a non-traditional format since I am listening to the audiobook but I decided to go with something else for that one and I am reading Giant Days Volume 2 by Allison Trayman, Saren, and Coger. And this is also my read a book with orange on the cover. And I even have like this orangey bookmark here from The Incredibles. And yeah, I started reading this last night after I finished 
whatever happened to Jamie because Riley was still watching her movie and I thought, well, I'll just continue reading. And I got, well, there's not page numbers, but I got to here and I was just so tired that I couldn't read anymore. I couldn't see straight anymore. And it was like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I gotta go to bed, Riley, you gotta go. <laughs> and she still had like, I think another half an hour or something like that on her movie. And I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> but I was happy with what all I got done. I had completed one challenge. I completed one book and I started two others, which is working on three other challenges. So not too shabby. I also got some book mail yesterday that I thought I would show you. I have lots of packages here. Okay, so the first one I have here is called Spelled by Betsy Chow. Hi, church. <laughs> and this is the first book in the Spelled series, and this is a Wizard of Oz retelling, and I pretty much, I read the synopsis in a previous vlog where I got the other two that are in the series, but Dorothea in this story is the Princess of Oz, and she's essentially being forced into this marriage with the prince, and she is not interested in the prince, and her parents, her parents get trapped in this weird land called Kansas, and she has to find the Wizard of Oz to undo this curse before the wicked, wickedest witch is released and the curse of all curses, the end, comes about. So, I thought this sounded really cute. Plus, here are her Hans Christian Louis Batons. <laughs> I thought that was also cute. And all the books have these gorgeous different shoes on them. Love it. And I know that the other two books in the series pick up other fairy tales like Robin Hood and Camelot and things like that. And it has like a very once upon a time feel to it where these stories are combining. So if you like the show Once Upon a Time or if you liked how the Lunar Chronicles worked where the different fairy tales were kind of combining, you'd probably like this. Okay, the next two that I have here are Extras and Pretties by Scott Westerfield and Pretties is book two in the Ugly series and Extras is book four. I already have books one and three which I haven't read yet but I plan on reading soon because he is going to be at Y'all Fest and I'm going to that. And in Uglies it's like everybody starts out ugly and you have to go through this procedure to become pretty. And Tally is about to turn 16 and she's going to go through this procedure to become a pretty. And then her best friend, who is also supposed to become a pretty, runs off and decides she's not going to do it. And then Tally is tasked with going and finding her friend and turning her in. Or Tally's not going to ever be allowed to be a pretty and she's going to have to remain an ugly forever. And... That's what these are about. And it also kind of gives me a feeling of Bells by Danielle Clayton, which I've heard is kind of a similar premise. So I guess if you like that book, then you might be interested in these or vice versa. Okay, and the last book I got is Unforgotten by Jessica Brody. And this is the second book in the Unremembered series. And it's about this girl named Serafina who was found in the wreckage of a plane crash. They weren't expecting to find any survivors, and yet they found this 16-year-old girl. But she can't remember ever boarding the plane. She can't remember anything her, about her life prior to the accident. And nobody can explain why she's not on the flight manifest. There are no like fingerprint or DNA records of her anywhere in the world. Nobody really knows who or really what she is. So that sounded really interesting to me. And I already have the first and the third book, so I needed to get the second one to complete it. Well, that's all for yesterday, and today I'm going to work on Giant Days, You, and when I finish Giant Days, I'll probably switch to Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend by Katie Finn, because this is my book with my initials on the cover, which is MKB, so we have M in Mend. 
K in Katie and B in Broken. So all of my initials right there. And I think I'm just going to get me some breakfast, watch a little YouTube. I've already watched Chelsea Darling's vlog from the day one of Contemporary Athon, and oh my gosh, she's killing it. And so I want to see if Natasha and Julie have put theirs up yet and watch them as well. And then I'm probably going to head to the gym. So I guess I will just check in with you later. So it is two o'clock in the afternoon now. Now, when I left the house to go to the gym, it was a beautiful, sunshiny day. Right now, it is a beautiful, sunshiny day. But when I left the gym, it was torrential downpour all over me. I was completely soaked when I got home. And then, when I walked to my front door, I had packages, book packages, that were also very, very wet. And so, I came in, I opened everything up to make sure it was dry. And luckily, the books inside were fine. I was, however, soaked and starving. So I got me some lunch and, well, I pretty much dried off while I was eating lunch. But I thought I would show you the books I got since they're all open now. So one of the packages I had was a book outlet order. So you get a surprise book outlet haul. The other package was just one book, and it was a book that we had pre-ordered, and well, it was just released today, and that is Storm Runner by J.C. Cervantes. I'm not sure how to say that, but isn't that cover pretty? Oh, it's like yellow on the inside, orange and blue font on the outside. So this is the second book in the Rick Riordan Presents collection, I guess. So this is very similar to Arusha where she's waking up this god and in this Zane he ends up discovering that the sleeping volcano that is in his backyard is actually a centuries old prison for the Mayan god of death and this is somehow tied to Zane's destiny and there's a lot of Mayan mythology and we really enjoyed Arusha. And I really just wanted to get this one because we like the other one so much. Okay, now on to my surprise book outlet haul. Okay, so the first book I have in here is the autobiography of James T. Kirk, The Story of Starfleet's Greatest Captain, edited by David A. Goodman. And this is totally a book for Marty because he is a big Trekkie and I thought he would enjoy this. Okay, the next book is The Becoming of Noah Shaw by Michelle Hodkin, and this is sort of a spinoff of the Mara Dyer series, which I haven't read those, but I intend to. And, well, I know that Noah Shaw is one of the characters in that book, and I think this is just his story. Okay, next is The Last Namsara by Kristen Cicerelli, and I just think this is a beautiful cover. And I saw G over at Book Roast was reading it, and I think she really liked it. And it sounded really interesting to me. This says, A Forbidden Love, A Kingdom at War, A Secret That Will Change Everything. Okay, so next up I have I Stopped Somewhere by T.E. Carter. And this is about a girl named Ellie who is starting her freshman year. And she wants to not be popular but she wants to just kind of blend into the wallpaper and then well then she finds herself brutally assaulted and then trapped I guess with her assaulter and she sees this repeating over and over again other girls being assaulted and trapped there with her and she's like who's gonna look for the girl that nobody even really knew was there to begin with because she's just a wallflower Okay, next is Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. And this is about a girl named Jessie who is about to start her junior year of high school. And her mother has just passed away and she's had to move to LA with her dad and her step monster and go to this pretentious LA private school where the only person she knows is her stepbrother that I take she's not really a big fan of. And then she ends up with sort of a secret friend that calls themselves somebody slash nobody that's kind of helping her 
get through just everything that she's going through. And that is what this is about. Next I have the hardcover of Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. And Marty and I are currently reading the first book in this series, which is Scythe, and really enjoying it. Scythe is about these two kids who are essentially recruited to become Scythes. And Scythes are the only thing that ends life in their world because they live in an era where death has pretty much been defeated. So people are living you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, and in order to regulate population, they have scythes that, well, essentially randomly take lives. And our two main characters, neither one of them wants to be a scythe, but apparently that's what it takes to be a scythe. And other than death, which scythes have control over, the Thunderhead pretty much controls and regulates everything else in their world and yeah that's what this is about okay next up is bring her home by david bell and this is a thriller it's about 15 year old summer and her best friend Haley. they get abducted one day and days later they turn up at a park Haley's dead summer is badly beaten and Summer's father stands vigil with Summer all bandaged up in the hospital. And the only thing that Summer can seem to say is the word no. And the more time her father spends with her, the more he begins to question whether this is actually Summer that they have. And troubling questions about Summer's life start coming out. And it just sounded really interesting. And then the last book in the box is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. And I mean, it's a Cinderella retelling with like a geeky element and it just sounded super cute. And you know, I love me some retellings and how pretty is this book? And look at the inside. Okay, this is gorgeous. Yes, Cinderella with a geeky fandom twist. Love it. And that is it in this box. And I hope you enjoyed this surprise book outlet haul. As far as my reading goes, I finished Giant Days Volume 2 and I give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I really, really, really like this series and I absolutely plan on continuing to read the rest of them. And when I went to the gym and on my way there and on my way back, I continued listening to you. And I am currently on page 144 of this. I have my pages marked on where I want to get to each day. So my goal is to get to page 174 today. So I got like 30 more pages to go. And here in just a little while, I plan on starting broken hearts, fences, and other things to mend. All right, I'll check in later. It is currently 10 30 p.m. and Riley is going to be coming over again tonight because she wanted to come over and study over here which is fine but I figured I would go ahead and film my final check-in for the day now because I may not get another opportunity to. Yesterday I forgot to tell you that Xander and I are reading The House with a Clock in Its Walls by John Belair's this is not part of contemporary thon it is just something Xander and I are reading. And yesterday we got to page 91 of this, but today we got to page 138, and I plan on us finishing this tomorrow because we're going to go and see this movie on Friday. And I started out the day today completing two challenges with one book. That was Giant Days Volume 2, which is a graphic novel, so that completed my read a contemporary in a non-traditional format, as well as read a contemporary with orange on the cover. And this is obviously very, very orange. So two challenges knocked out with this one graphic novel. 
Also, I continued listening to You by Caroline Kepnes, and I'm currently on page 199 of this. And this counts as my dark, spooky contemporary, but it also counts as reading a new to me author. And because I'm listening to it, it also counts as a non-traditional format. So that works for three. <laughs> and then I started reading Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend by Katie Finn, AKA Morgan Matson. So this also counts as a new to me author because I've never read Katie Finn or Morgan Matson. I have books under both names, but I haven't read them until now. And I'm currently on page 57 of this and plan on continuing reading this tonight. But this covers the challenge of read a book with my initials on the cover, which it has all my initials on this cover right here. I just took it off. And oh my goodness, is this a very, very, very pink book. We got pink here, pink here, pink there. Yeah, a lot of pink. A lot of pink. <laughs> It actually is kind of like a little distracting seeing all this pink around the edges when I'm reading. But it's not bad. And it's going pretty quickly. My plan is to get to at least page 89 tonight. And I'm also working on editing a video to try to get it uploaded and everything so it'll post tomorrow. I guess that's it for today and I will talk to you tomorrow. So it is about 11.30 on Wednesday, September 19th, and I have a little bit of a rant for you. But first, let me tell you how I did on my reading last night. I got to page 128 of this, so just a little bit more reading. And uh, I was also working on editing a video and getting that uploaded for today. So Riley was over until like, a little after one o'clock in the morning. And I always wait until she gets home and sends me a text to let me know she made it safely before I go to bed. And well, she forgot to write me yesterday and that is not what the rant's about, but she forgot to write me. And it was like around two o'clock in the morning and I realized, oh, it's two o'clock in the morning. She must have forgotten. And then my phone dings and I thought it was Marty writing me because he's working nights right now. So he was at work at that time. So. It dings and it wasn't Marty. It was like an automated text thing to notify me of something and it said, your reservation starting November 8th, 2018 was canceled and you've been fully refunded. And I was like, what? So I booked this back in June, in June. This is for y'all fest and I booked it in June because I knew there would be plenty of availability at that time when I booked it. The prices would be lower. I had it planned to get everything booked then. Okay, so apparently Charleston made some changes to the regulations about short-term rentals in July, which caused the place that I was staying to not qualify for being able to do that. Back in July, so in July, my thought is what they should have done was at that point in time, because they did not qualify to be short-term renters, they should have refunded my money then and taken their listing off until they could get qualified, if they could get qualified. No, they didn't do that. They didn't notify me of any of this until two o'clock in the morning yesterday, where they said they had tried to get an appeal the day before and it didn't work and they were denied so they had to cancel my reservation and refund my money but had they done this in july i could have found another place where i wanted to be for a reasonable price but no they waited till now and now almost everything is sold out what is left is ridiculously priced or not where i want to be <sighs> so mad so I was up until like four o'clock in the morning trying to find a new place and I ended up booking a hotel room at the Days Inn where we stayed last year which is a little farther away than I want to be but I could still walk to everything but it's it's a bit of a walk it's like I don't know 15 20 minute walk to where everything else is happening where the place I had booked was like 
a one or two minute walk. It was just right there in the heart of everything. Though the days in, because of when I'm booking it now, this place that's farther away than I want to be and not as nice as what I was looking for is going to cost me more than any of the places that I could have booked before. So, yeah, I'm a little, uh, I was a little upset about that. Plus, I really didn't get any sleep tonight. And I have training at the gym today. So that was my adventure last night. I was upset. Still upset. But, okay, so that was my rant. I'm going to, today, like I said, I have the gym. And I'm going to, on my way there and back, I'll be listening to You by Carolyn Kepnes. I won't be really listening to it while I'm at the gym this time because I'm going to be working with a trainer. So I won't get as much done, but I can listen to it more when I'm home doing something else. And my plan is to get to at least page 174 of this today, which I think I could easily get to. I got to like the halfway point of my reading for today on this last night. Oh, and I plan on finishing this with Xander tonight. Because as I said last night, we're going to go to the drive-in on Friday and see this and Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. So that'll be fun. All right, well, I'm going to go for now and I will be taking you along with me when I go to the gym. So I will check in with you later. So it's currently 9.30 at night and I forgot to bring my camera to the gym. I actually got all the way to the gym and realized that I had left my camera at home. And at that point I couldn't turn around and come get it because I had training. So didn't film today. But I'll probably film on Friday when I go. So that'll be alright. I did want to go ahead and do my check-in for the night because... Well, I need to get this video edited that I've been working on and I don't really have a lot of time before I need to go to bed. So I wanted to go ahead and check in now because I probably won't read any more tonight. So Xander and I finished The House of the Clock in Its Walls by John Belairs and it was okay. I think the, I actually think in this case the movie is going to be better than the book. It was a fun, quick read. Um, we read it in like four four days you know, had it split up about 40 ish pages a day and yeah I would say I'd give this like a 3 or a 3.5 and I asked Sander what he would give it and he said he he was thinking it would also be a 3. It's about this kid's parents have passed away and he goes to live with his uncle and his uncle and his uncle's best friend slash neighbor are both wizards and they live in this house that has a previous wizard living there that has put this clock somewhere in the house that is enchanted and uh, like every wall you put your ear up against you can hear the ticking and it sometimes is louder it's sometimes quieter but you can hear it throughout the entire house all the time it never stops and there's like some ghostly spirits and things like that and it's I mean like I said it's a fun little read I don't know that I would have read it had it not been for the movie and I I'm really expecting with the trailers that I have seen I'm expecting the movie to actually be more entertaining than the book was at least I hope so also I continued listening to you by Carolyn Kepnes and I'm currently on page 221 of this so I've only got it about halfway of what I wanted to read for today, but that's okay because tomorrow Xander has his YMCA thing and I have something at Massage Envy and so does Marty, but mine's only like an hour long and his is two hours. So I actually have a half hour before and after mine while Marty is getting his massage and I can listen to this or read my other book during that time. So speaking of my other book, Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend. I am currently on page 152 of this, and I can't remember if I told y'all about this book, but it's about this 15-year-old girl who is having to go and spend the summer with her father in the Hamptons, and she hasn't been there in five years, I think. She's actually a 16-year-old girl. She hasn't been there in five years, 
when she was 11 and she caused some serious trauma, drama, havoc when she was there when she was 11. And this time when she arrives, she's actually, not only is she 16 and looks slightly different, but she's also had a makeover, which has changed her hair color and things like that. And she's mistaken as somebody else because she's wearing this necklace. It's got the letter S on it because it's something that her and her best friend Sophie did. And she's holding a coffee drink that has the name Sophie on the side. And so she's kind of has this mistaken identity of Sophie and she kind of just goes along with that because she's there meeting these people that she's caused all this havoc with and she doesn't want them to know that it's her and she's trying to make up for it but she's running into all kinds of trouble herself and I think that the other girl actually knows who she is and she's causing trouble for our main character. I don't know. But it's a cute story. Like a revenge kind of story. You know, like halfway through it now. And it's going pretty quickly when I have the time to sit and read. Which hopefully I'll be able to get a good chunk of that read tomorrow. So for now, I must edit this video so that I can eventually go to bed tonight. Because I really want to get this edited and uploaded tonight. And it's almost 10 o'clock. So I'm going to go and I will talk to you tomorrow. So it is like a quarter till one in the morning on Friday, September 21st. I haven't gone to sleep yet. I have been so busy today. We had some nice relaxing time at Massage Envy while Xander had his thing at the Y today. And then Marty and I went and had some lunch and that was really, really nice. And did some running around, some errands while we were out. We were listening to an audiobook, but this unfortunately isn't part of Contemporary Thon. We continued listening to Scythe by Neil Schusterman, and we are currently on page 242 of this. So, yeah, this is something that we're doing kind of aside from Contemporary Thon, but I'm still reading it, so I thought I'd share that with you. I did continue listening to you today when I was actually going through this catalog of Christmassy things and I got to page 306 of this. Not quite where I wanted to get today. I wanted to get to page 337 but not too far off. And I did get a little bit of reading of Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend by Katie Finn while we were out and about today. And I'm currently on page 192 of this. Again, not quite where I wanted to be today. I wanted to get to 154. So I'll have a little bit of catching up to do tomorrow. But once we got home, I had to edit and edit and edit and edit. <laughs> I'm so behind on all my videos that I'm trying to catch up right now. So I'm putting out week-long reading vlogs, one after another after another pretty much, just trying to get everything out there. Well, maybe not all of them are week-long, but still, they're long vlogs. Like the one that I was editing yesterday and today had three hours of raw footage, and I was just like, oh my gosh, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> but I got that one done, and it's uploaded, and I have to edit another one tomorrow. So yeah or technically today because it's already Friday but also tomorrow slash today Friday night Becca Xander and I are all going to the drive-in and that'll be fun and then Saturday is the point that my fall into reading a thon overlaps with contemporary a thon and I also think that might be the same day that the Contemporary Thon live show is. So there's gonna be a lot going on on Saturday. And I'm probably still gonna have to be editing. And I'm gonna have to be reading for both readathons and vlogging for both readathons. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, considering it's almost one o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna go to bed. I will talk to you tomorrow. So it is currently three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, September 22nd, which means. One, it's the first day of fall. Two, it is also the beginning of my fall into reading a thon. So they are now overlapping. And three means I didn't vlog anything yesterday because, well, 
I was just busy. So I did get some reading done and I'll tell you about that. Also, I did a lot of editing, but I didn't finish. And we went to the drive-in yesterday and we watched The Clock with the House in Its Walls and we watched Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. Okay, so as far as The House with the Clock in Its Walls, it was a good movie and as I expected, it was so incredibly different from the book, but it was also better than the book in my opinion. However, I don't know, it still wasn't like, it wasn't the best movie I've seen, but it wasn't terrible either. It was, it kind of reminded me of the Goosebumps movies that you see on TV. Maybe just a little bit more, maybe just a little bit spookier than that. But it reminded me of Goosebumps movies. Not overly frightening and not a huge storyline, really. They added a whole lot from the book. They took some things away from the book. Some things they just changed and it was just kind of eh. But the second movie, Mamma Mia, was actually better than I expected it to be. I mean, it was a sequel. I wasn't expecting it to be great. And I actually cried like three times watching it. It was like, it was sad. But there were also like really funny parts. There was a lot of humor in it, which I guess was needed to kind of balance out how sad a lot of it was. But I actually really, really enjoyed that movie. Also, I did go to the gym yesterday, but again, I forgot to bring my camera. So there'll be no gym footage in this vlog, but that's okay. I at least worked out. Yesterday, I finished listening to You by Carolyn Kepnes, and I think I would give this like a 3.5. It was dark, it was creepy, but it was more, I don't know. It was weird reading it because, or listening to it in my case, because there were times that I found myself actually liking the crazy stalker murderous guy and like, you know, hoping things would work out for him. And then there were other times that I'm like, wait a minute, he's crazy stalker murderous guy. And then there are times that I liked the girl in the story and other times that I really, really didn't like her and she was just annoying to me. And I'm like, why does he seem to think she's this fabulous person when she's not? But... I don't know. I, I think I would give this a 3.5. It was an interesting read and it was kind of a quick read and I liked it. Also, I continued reading Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend by Katie Finn and I got to page 254 of this. So my plan is to finish this today and then I'm going to start reading Top 10 by Katie Katugno, which completes the final challenge for me, which is to read a diverse contemporary. And my goal is to read this over this weekend. Hopefully I can get most of it done today. I don't know if that's going to happen, but this is like 357 pages. Hopefully, I can get at least half of this knocked out today. That's my goal. So I can finish it tomorrow. But now I'm going to go and take a shower and do my hair and makeup because in a little bit, Xander and I have some filming to do. So I will just check in with you later. So it is currently 9.30 at night and I haven't read anything at this point as far as contemporary thon goes. I actually have read something for my Fall into Reading-a-thon, but that's going to be a separate vlog, so you'll just have to stay tuned for that one. But I have spent several hours today filming, oh my goodness, like five hours or something like that I spent filming. Crazy. And now I'm just trying to get some reading done maybe work on editing this one video that I have been working on for two days because I just don't have the time. And that's really it for today. I'm hoping that I can finish Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Men tonight, hopefully. 
and then tomorrow I'll have to completely read top 10 unless I can find a shorter diverse contemporary that I might have somewhere on my shelf. I might have to look and see if I can find something because I'm not really 100% sure if I can get top 10 done tomorrow. I thought I was going to be able to get it done if I had the whole weekend, but mm, don't really have that anymore. So, all right. Well, I am going to go and see what I can find on my shelves and I will just check in with you tomorrow. So it is currently almost 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, September 23rd, which means it is the last day of contemporary a -thon. So last night I ended up staying up until like 2, 3, something like that in the morning. And I managed to finish Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend. And I really, really, really enjoyed this. It was super cute. I, there were aspects that I figured out pretty early on that, you know, what I thought was true. But there were a couple of things that surprised me still in the end. I think I would give this a 3.75 because I definitely plan on continuing the series. I really, really, really enjoyed it. But there were a couple of aspects that I was kind of like, eh, this could have been written a little bit better. Just like... There were things that the main character said and did and thought that I was just like, that is completely unrealistic and nobody would be dumb enough to say those things or act that way or whatever. But, and, and the fact that I did kind of figure out part of it early on. But like I said, loved it. Plan on reading the rest of them. So this is about a girl named Gemma who, when she was 11 years old, she caused some serious havoc to this girl named Haley and Haley's mother. And it was all because Gemma's parents had just separated. And next thing you know, Haley's mother and Gemma's father start getting together and are dating and... It kind of takes Gemma by surprise and, well, at 11 years old, all she wants to do is get rid of Haley's mother and stop that from happening because she wants her parents to get back together because their separation is supposed to only be temporary and Haley's mother would interfere with that. So she succeeds in getting rid of Haley and her mother, but really, really really hurts Haley in the process and now five years later she ends up having to go back to the Hamptons to stay with her father for a little while and she ends up running into Haley and her brother her very first day there and there's some confusion on who she is because she's wearing her best friend Sophie's necklace that has an S and her coffee cup says Sophie and so everybody thinks that she's Sophie. So she ends up deciding to just kind of go along with the whole she's Sophie and she decides that this is how she's going to make up to Haley. She's going to show her what a good person she is and that she really is her friend and then she's going to tell her that she's actually Gemma and as you can expect things do not go as planned and there's a lot of unlucky events and mishaps and subterfuge and it was just a really cute story. Okay, so I decided instead of reading top 10 because that would require me to sit and physically read that whole book today and I just don't think I have time to get that done, I decided I wanted to go with something that I had an audiobook of. So I decided to listen to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli because I have the audiobook of this and I've watched the movie but I haven't read the book yet. So I wanted to listen to this while I got some other things done and I think I can get this finished today. So that is my goal. And it's just about as long as top 10. Maybe just a little bit shorter. But like I said, because I have an audiobook, I can do other things while listening to it. And well, I think I can actually accomplish this today. So I will go for now and I will check in with you later. 
So it is about 10.30 p.m. on Sunday, September 23rd, and that means it's the end of contemporary -a -thon. And I did manage to complete all of my challenges, and I read a whole, whole lot. I actually did make, I think, just one change to one of the books on my TBR for contemporary -a -thon, but I'm really glad I did because I loved the book. So let me go through and tell you what all I read for contemporary -a -thon. So I started out reading Whatever Happened to Janie by Carolyn B. Cooney and well this completes a few different challenges. First, it's a little bit of a dark contemporary because it's about a girl who was kidnapped. But also, this was my book for my five star predictions, and as I predicted, it was five stars. It was so good, and I read it in just one day. It's a little short book. It was only like 199 pages, so yes, I got through this in one day, no problem, and I loved it, and I'm looking forward to continuing with the rest of the series. This is actually the second book in the Janie Johnson series. So the next thing I read was Giant Days Volume 2 and this completed reading a contemporary with orange on the cover and it also is a graphic novel so it completed the read a book in a non-traditional format. Oh, and I gave this four stars. I enjoy this series so much and I can't wait to read the rest of them. Okay, next up I read You by Carolyn Kepnes. This is also a dark and spooky contemporary and it was also a new to me author and it was it was good i enjoyed it it was interesting but in the end i think i gave it like a 3.5 because though i really did enjoy it i was really torn on this whole story because i don't want to like somebody that's a murderous psycho stalker guy but i found myself liking him at times which i'm like this is not right and then there are times that I was liking the victim and times I wasn't liking her and there was just, this is a strange book. But I thought 3.5 because I really did enjoy it. Okay, next up is Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend by Katie Finn, AKA Morgan Matson, And I gave this 3.75. It was a super cute, light, fluffy contemporary with like revenge aspects and subterfuge and it was just a really really fun read and I actually do plan on continuing to read the rest of this I think it's a trilogy and yeah I really like this one as well and then last but certainly not least the book that I ended up changing was my diverse contemporary and originally I was planning on reading top 10 by Katie Katugno but because I just had an arc of that and I needed something that I could go through a little quicker, I decided to switch to something that I could listen to an audiobook. So this also completed a non-traditional format. That way I could do other things while listening. So I decided to switch to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli and oh my gosh. Okay, so I've seen the movie before I read the book. I know. So taboo. But I'm really glad that I watched that movie because I wasn't really all that interested in this book until I watched that movie and I fell in love with the movie and I was like, I have to read these books. So I went and I bought all of her books and I've read The Upside of Unrequited and it was okay. I gave it like a 3.5, but this book is so a five star. I loved it so, so much and I want to watch the movie again. <laughs> so I had, I think, an excellent contemporary thon and I did actually read a little bit more as you may have seen. Marty and I are listening to the audiobook of Scythe and we got to page 243 of this and Xander and I read The House of the Clock in Its Walls and we finished it and then we went to the drive-in this weekend and we watched the movie which was also really good. Better than the book actually which is something <laughs> because I don't say that often but the movie was actually better than the book so this is what I read for contemporary thon and this is what I read in addition to that so this is what I read throughout this week and I have to say I'm pretty proud of myself I think I did an awesome job and I'm not done yet because well I've got 
fall into reading a thon going on now. So I'm going to go and get to that reading. So I guess I'm just going to end this vlog here. Let me know if you participated in Contemporary Athon or if you're participating in the Fall into Reading Athon. Comment down below and let me know how your reading went. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.